Wisdom of Solomon Wisdom Through the Ages Welcome to the Reading to the Wisdom of Solomon Part 1 I am Chloe, I will be reading for you today. You are about to embark into a wisdom journey. First I will guide you into a deep state of relaxation, where you will experience a wonderful calmness and meditative state of mind. This time is for you, and you alone. Get into a nice comfortable position. I will start by giving you some information about the book first. Then I will start reading this book and pause in between sections to give you time to ponder on what he said. I will read part 1. The Book of Wisdom, or the Wisdom of Solomon, is a Jewish work written in Greek and most likely composed in Alexandria, Egypt. Generally dated to the mid-first century BC, the central theme of the work is wisdom itself, appearing under two principal aspects. In its relation to man, wisdom is the perfection of knowledge of the righteous as a gift from God showing itself in action. In direct relation to God, wisdom is with God from all eternity. It is one of the seven sapiential or wisdom books comprising the Septuagint, the others being Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Song of Solomon, Job, and Sirach. It is included in the canon of deuterocanonical books by the Roman Catholic Church and the Anagignos Comina meaning those which are to be read, of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Most Protestants consider it part of the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon Part 1 Trust the Lord. You rulers of this earth should love justice, you should do what is right and keep the Lord in mind. The Lord will answer your prayers, if you trust and don't doubt. Our deceitful thoughts separate us from God, and by putting God to the test, we make fools of ourselves, because wisdom won't live with deceitful slaves of sin. A pure mind and self-control won't let you be deceitful, you will reject foolish thoughts and hate injustice. Our words and thoughts are known to God. Although wisdom is friendly, 
she will still hold you guilty if you speak evil of God. Even words spoken in secret and our most private thoughts are known to God, because the Spirit of the Lord is everywhere in this world. His spirit holds it all together and hears every word. Eight and so liars will be judged and then punished, their evil plans and deeds will be discovered, then reported to the Lord, and they will be sentenced. Nothing can escape being heard not even a faint grumble. So stop all useless complaining and fault-finding. Even a faint whisper can cause a problem, and lies are deadly. God created us to live. Don't invite death and destruction by living like a fool. God did not create us for death, and when we die, it doesn't make him glad. God created all creatures with life that continues. All living beings should keep on living untouched by deadly poison, because the kingdom of death doesn't rule this world, and justice lives forever. The Evil Thoughts of Evil People The words and deeds of evil people are an invitation to death. They think of death as friendly and desirable, they are partners with death, just as they deserve. Their foolish minds lead them to say to each other, Life is short and sad the end is certain to come, and no one escapes the grave. Only by chance were we born, and after we are gone, everything will be as though we had never been. Our breath is merely smoke, and reason is a spark from the beat of our hearts. When that beating ends, our bodies turn to dust, and our spirits vanish into thin air. In time we will be forgotten and so will our deeds. Life disappears like a cloud, it melts away like mist in the heat of the sun. Time fades away like a shadow, and no one returns from death. So make the most of life, especially while you're young. Drink the very best wine, wear expensive perfume, 
and enjoy the spring flowers, decorate your head with rosebuds before they wilt. Do your share of celebrating. Party always and everywhere that's what life is all about. Abuse the poor and the honest. And do the same to widows and old people. After all, might is right, and weakness is useless. Destroy law-abiding people. Get them out of the way. All they do is condemn you for breaking the law and doing what we know is wrong. They claim to know the Lord God and to be his children. That's why they criticize your very thoughts. Just looking at good people is a heavy burden, their lifestyle is so different, in fact, it's strange. They think you're trash, and they won't have anything to do with you. They claim God is their father and that he will reward them. So test what they say by watching them die. If those so-called good people really are God's children, he will look after them. We will insult and torture them to find out how gentle and patient they are. We will sentence them to a shameful death, after all, they have said that they will be protected. Evil people are foolish. That's the reasoning of those who are evil, and they are both blind and foolish. They don't understand what God has in mind, and they don't know the reward for living right. God created us to live forever, just as he himself does. But death entered the world because the devil was jealous, and so all his followers die. The future of those who please God. The souls of those who have pleased God are safe in his hands and protected from pain. Only in the minds of the foolish are those people dead and their death considered a disaster or a destruction. In fact, they are at peace and destined never to die, though others may have thought they were being punished. They will be richly rewarded, because God tested them for a while and found them worthy of being his children.
God tested them like gold in a fiery furnace, and he accepted them like a pleasing sacrifice. When God shows them mercy, they will be like shining sparks setting weeds on fire. The Lord will rule them forever and let them rule over nations. All of God's faithful people will understand truth and live with him in love, because God is kind and merciful to those he chooses to be his holy people. Punishment for the Wicked The wicked will be punished, as their evil thoughts deserve. They rebelled against the Lord and abused his people. They are terribly miserable, because they reject wisdom and sound advice. Their future is hopeless, and everything they do is completely useless. Their wives are foolish, their children are evil and under God's curse. God blesses the needy. A wife who remains faithful will be given children at a time that God decides. Men who remain faithful to God and do good deeds will receive special blessings and be given honored positions in the temple of the Lord, even though they may be unable to have children. Remember that good deeds are easily recognized, they are like fruit on a vine that has wisdom as its roots. Living right is better than having children, both God and people will always remember you and the good you have done. People imitate goodness, and they miss it when it is gone. Goodness always triumphs, it receives the highest honors because it is unselfish. But all of the many children born to sinners will be useless and helpless like trees without roots. They may blossom for a while, but they will be swept away in a gust of wind. Their branches will be broken before they mature, and the fruit they produce will be worthless. When God judges the world, these children will be witnesses against their sinful parents. Good people may die early, but they will be at rest. True respect isn't gained merely by growing old, people are honored because of their wisdom and goodness. 
Enoch, a person God loved and who pleased him, was living among sinners. But God took him away to protect his mind and soul from the influence of evil. Even the most innocent person can be deceived and destroyed by sinful thoughts. But Enoch loved the Lord, he became mature in a few years and pleased the Lord. So he quickly took Enoch away to protect him from evil. Others failed to understand that this is how God shows kindness and mercy and protects his holy people. Good people will triumph. Good people may die young, but they shame those sinners who live a long time. Sinners fail to understand why God gives them a long life and lets the wise die young. When they see this happen, they simply sneer. But God will laugh at them because their dead bodies will be forever disgusting to the rest of the dead. God will throw them speechless to the ground, and they will be like buildings that crumble. They will suffer and rot then be forgotten. The Final Judgment Sinners will be horrified when they are condemned by their evil deeds. But all who have pleased God will stand with confidence in the presence of those who abused them and made fun of the good they did. When those evil ones see how God has saved his people, they will tremble with fear and be completely amazed. They will groan and say to each other, we should have turned from sin. We were fools to sneer at those people, but we thought they were fools who had died in disgrace. Why are they God's children? Why are they his holy people? So we were the ones who turned from truth and rejected the light from those good people. We refused to follow the Lord. Instead we were lawless and followed a desert road that led us to destruction. All of our pride and wealth has proved to be useless. Everything we treasured has vanished like a shadow or a hastily spoken word, or like the wake of a ship on ocean waves, or like the flight of a bird through the air, or like the unknown path of an arrow on its way to the target. As soon as we were born, we began to disappear because we followed only evil and left behind no traces of anything good. Sinners have no more hope than dust in the wind, or frost in the heat of the sun, or smoke in a breeze. They are remembered no longer than an overnight guest.
the Lord's people will be rewarded. The Lord Most High takes care of his people, he will reward them, and they will live forever. The Lord will protect them with his powerful right arm, and he will bless them with a glorious crown. Eagerness will be like armor for the Lord, and he will equip all creation to fight and punish his enemies. The Lord will protect his chest with deeds of fairness, and for a helmet he will wear equal justice for all. Holiness will be his strong shield, and fierce anger will be his sharp sword. All creation will join with him in fighting his crazy enemies. Arrows of lightning will leap from behind the clouds and never miss their target. Fearsome hailstones will strike the Lord's enemies, while ocean waves and rivers roll over them like a flood. Then a mighty windstorm will sweep them away because lawlessness and evil bring ruin to the whole earth and to every kingdom. I will stop here for today. I will continue another in another session. I am going to count from 1 to 5 now and with each word I say, you will become more and more aware of the present moment, and ready to go about your day. I will continue to read the book in the next part. One. Coming back now. Two. Bringing back the memory of nature with you. Three. Feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. Four. Feeling stress free and ready to achieve anything. And five. Welcome back and enjoy the rest of your day.